Hello. So we can wait two minutes more for, for the rest of the class, but you can ask me some questions about midterm, for example, if you have. Is it closed book or open book? Yeah, it will be open book online. I will need your cameras and I will send you all the rules today. I have to double check them and just to send you. Oh. Uh, how many tasks uh, th there will be? Uh, will there be uh, some like to choose a correct uh, answer? I, I mean, uh, tasks on theory. I think there will be three or four tasks, and there will be questions to calculate something. I mean, so we covered the model and. So you will be asked to take some derivatives to maximize profit or whatever. And then there will be task to, to discuss some probably network externalities, network effects, positive, negative, so on. Provide some example. So kind of like that. Here is the slides. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a bit sick, so um, probably I can have some troubles with voice today. So I think we can start, I'll just... Um, As well, some of you asked me about Sergei master programs. So I maybe I will be I'll be able to organize a proper presentation about the programs. But uh, now it's under consideration because students with Russian citizenship and Belarusian as well cannot apply for visas in Czech Republic currently. So that, that's why, yeah, anyway, I will do some presentation for you, small one, but the official one, I'm not sure. Yeah, so if you are interested, you just please let me know, maybe from, so just collect uh, names who want to participate and I can then ask for a proper presentation if I will have at least 15 students who want to come and, and listen about master program or master and PhD. If some of you are interested. <coughs> yes. I will send you a list later on. Okay, it's fine because I think we will do it sometime in December. Yeah, so, but before the, the final exams. <coughs> uh, so then let me start our, what is this, fifth lecture? Right. So, and yeah, let me record. Probably everything is fine. So today we are talking about uh, platform pricing and how the platform set the prices. Uh, generally, we, we discuss it a bit uh, using <coughs> uh, just simple profit maximization, which we will use here as well, but we haven't discussed uh, the complicated cases for example, if you have two sites, two platforms, and they have different types of agents. Yeah, so we, we just mostly discuss the network externalities and uh, positive and negative uh, 
mõtlen siis nad rööli soovi kõikuleite the models for positive externalities but for negative you just have to change the sign there so you have negative effect of numbers so and uh, we have seen that uh, number of uh, agents on each side affects the platform's profit significantly <coughs> as well as behavior of agents on, on the other side. And then, um, it's probably for, for platform is needed that you need to uh, somehow generate the numbers on both sides, but you, you know that you have this effect that if you generate the numbers on one side, you will have the snowball effect on the other side, and so on, which works as, as opposite, so you, uh, need to solve so so called chicken and egg problem so then you need to start generating numbers uh, simultaneously on both sides so then today we will uh, talk about uh, how to efficiently set the prices to, to generate uh, the the profits according to these effects then then you uh, attract more agents on one side it will affect the, the other sides as well. So <clears throat> we will focus only on uh, subscription fees so that uh, you remember in, in one model we discussed the transaction fees. But yeah, now we have again the, the standard two sides uh, model and we will talk about the example of uh, sellers and buyers, but we will not discuss the transaction fees yeah, so that, let's say that we just uh, connect them and, and then we don't care what, what's going on there. And um, yeah, if, if we are a platform. But we can set different subscription fees for different sites. And uh, as a baseline, we will take uh, the model from, from our first, uh, first lecture. But uh, yeah, remember the first we saw for uh, if one side, uh, it was, they talk about the standard stuff, the, the indifferent uh, agents, or the, uh, those who join or not. And uh, yeah, we talked about simplest distribution. Yeah, so. Uh, and they have different uh, preferences for platforms, so that we have the distribution of agents and different. Uh, Agents has different uh, taste to platform so that we can uh, indeed uh, distinguish those who, who join the platform and, and those who, who are not. <laughs> and, and then here um, I will move to, to the board. Uh, so um, I will change the screen and uh, camera. But uh, everything is formalized uh, on the slides so that uh, I will send you slides after the lecture as well so you can go through from main points and uh, the results. Yeah, you can see me on that, on that camera. So firstly, <coughs> let's start with the model of monopoly, so that we have only one platform, and let's see how how it is optimal to to set the prices. And uh, since they are now focusing on the platform decision, we will 
uh, a bit uh, somehow uh, reformulate the problem. You remember what what was the uh, agent's value of joining the platform? It depends on what. Of uh, well, on the number of users on the platform and on their type. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. uh, on the subscription fee. Yeah, and the prices as well. So if you're living uh, fixed uh, price and choose uh, the the exact. Uh, Mm, the, the exact uh, agent, so they fixed his type. So we can kind of reverse the function. So now they can think about the, that uh, number of sellers that joins the platform depends on uh, their value, the personal value. So that before we have the value of joining the platform depends on number of, of agents who are on the platform. But now we want to reverse this function and and just have this big N, for example, for sellers as a function of value of the seller. <laughs> and the same for buyers. So that's new functions this value it's uh it's like <laughs> value without a uh, transportation cost right yeah so okay. for, for, for for that we will um, <clears throat> we will come later to this setup which we discussed in the last uh, session so we just want to have these functions, which are, can be anything, but we assume that they are differentiable, they're nice behave, so that number of... So if you have positive externalities, then number of sellers and, and buyers increase in value, right? No, that is logical, so it's, it's not about the externalities, right? So if your value of joining the platform is larger, then probably more agents presented on the platform and this. <clears throat> anyway. So then we can write the the utility of the of the agent is so that mm, now we say that yeah we know the numbers and this is just the sum the sum function of value. And now again let's reverse and think about the value of the agent who joins the platform. Because, yeah, if we consider the, the buyers, for example, uh, so let's take the, the model from our excisation of closed state. So it depends on, on the number of uh, agents on other side, right? So that if you're talking about buyer, so he wants to have a lot of sellers on the market. Don't care, don't care about the number of, of buyers on, on the same side. So then here we want to have number of sellers multiplied by some parameter. So on the accession we have u. And then uh, every buyer support is supposed to pay uh, the membership uh, fee. So then we can uh, rewrite it as uh, maybe Right, number of sellers depending on value of sellers. And we can do, do the same for sellers. So it's number of buyers and we had constant P. Um, now accessions and here will be So any questions here? Is it is it hard to understand or it's 
Is it okay that uh, we are using like um, mm, the value to um, to determine the function, but later we use that function to determine the value? Yeah, because now you have the connection of uh, between so value of buyer, right, and value of buyer here, and you have value of mm. seller here and value of seller here. So you have this this connection through this function. Okay. <clears throat> so then, um, can someone say me what will be the profit of the firm? Of the platform, yeah. Now depending on price of seller and price of, of buyer. If they're assuming that uh, there are some costs for connecting one seller and costs to connecting one buyer, what it will be? It uh, should be be like uh, M capital S multiplied by number of sellers plus capital M buyers multiplied by number of buyers and minus the connection cost, but we assume it's zero, right? No, no, no. It's just some constants right now. Ah, okay. In this case, um, minus them multiplied by numbers as well. So we can write. So. Right. So now let's think just about this profit function. So, uh, yeah, what what can platform set is the prices right? So, the, the prices are the the two parameters which platform can choose. But what what else is not uh, fixed here then? Then platform choose the prices. What what is affected by prices? So yeah, the platform can choose this uh, and that. Uh, the costs are fixed. So that. But what here depends on, on the prices as well? The numbers. Yeah, so the, the numbers depends on the value, and value depends on the prices, right? So that generally you want to take the the first order conditions, then you then you write down the f the profit function, you want to take the the derivative with respect to price. So you need to collect everything depending on prices. So, but we know that uh, value of seller here okay, itself is a is a function of, of price of what? Of seller. Right? And uh, value of buyer is a function of Price of buyer. Can we can we do the the following? Can we take the value of buyer and uh, write it as a value of buyer, for example, as a function of price of buyer, and then take the the first order derivative with respect to price of buyer? Can we can we do this from this setup? Comfortable. Oh. 
we should just substitute by the formula of our value now and it will be easier what but if you if you will substitute it with formula from value you will have value of of another agent right inside and you still will end up with value in your formulas right Yeah, so what, what we have is these uh, two formulas. So if we will uh, take this part and, and that part together, right? So then uh, you substitute the value for seller, you will receive the then number of value of, of buyer inside, uh, right? Do you have any ideas how to figure it out and how to take the derivatives then? <clears throat> Don't we just know like the, well, at least the sign of the derivative of capital N in respect to value? Yeah, they just know that it exists. And it's kind of nice behavior, so we, we just that assumed. Yeah, we we can think that it's positive. Okay, we, we did kind of the same ones. Uh, so now let me say that I don't want to take the the derivative with respect to prices. Since I have this connection between prices and values. So let me substitute to opposite. So I can easily figure out what is the prices as a function of values, and then I can take the derivative with respect to values. Okay. So from, from this formula, I can rewrite that. The price of the seller is what is this? Uh, it's number of buyers P minus value of seller. And price of buyer is number of sellers, value of sellers, U minus value of buyer. And then I can take these two, put it into my profit maximization problem and I have only two parameters right only value of buyer and value of seller so let's do it so what will be here okay. now I will think that this depends on values so firstly it was sellers right case Now I have two different parameters. If I find the, the value of buyers, optimal value of buyers and value of sellers, I can easily calculate by this formula the, the prices which I, which I want to set. So let me take the first order conditions then. So let's, let's think about buyer. Buyer's value firstly, what we have here, Uh, then we have um, 
So value of buyer for each color I picked actually for buyer valid. Okay. So we have it here, we have it here and here. So first one we, we already took. <clears throat> the second one is minus number of buyers, value of buyers. And then it will be plus all this stuff. equals to zero. And then we'll have the same for for seller with opposite uh, indexes. So <clears throat> what we want to find here is um, <laughs> indeed prices. So What, and what is the prices here? Uh, right, so do you remember that uh, this is our equation for prices? So number of buyers multiplied by P minus uh, value of sellers, it's price of sellers and the same for buyers, but opposite. So you can see that uh, this exactly price for buyer. Am I right? Yeah. Excuse me. And mm -hmm. shouldn't we have like uh, another um, equation there as well? It would be like two equations, no? Yes, yes. So I take it just with respect to value of buyers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And we need need to take the same for value of sellers, but it will be the the opposite. Yeah. So they're, they're now the indexes, so you need to change and, and then change P on you. <coughs> so you can do the same at home, but I'm just uh, don't want to do the same second time to, to lose the time. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, so it will be kind of kind of the same, but uh, with different. So you have to change B to S and, and then P to U. No so then I wonder, wonder if, what do they have for uh, price for buyers minus uh, here, right? They have co uh, costs for buyers. Then let me divide everything by N prime B uh, value of B. So that yeah, it's will be canceled here. So it will be <coughs> plus P number of sellers, value of sellers, and then minus number of buyers divided by the derivative of number of buyers. This equal to zero. So then let me then rewrite it. So, and then I can do the same, right, for sellers. But you, you can check this at home. It's So they got these two optimal prices. And what we can tell about this. <clears throat> so if we are talk talking about the price, 
uh -huh. let's think about buyers, for instance. So what is this? That's the cost of connecting one buyer. Yes, yeah, so that's the baseline, what you want to cover, setting the price. So at least you need to cover the cost of connecting one, one buyer, then you ask something from buyer, right? <clears throat> so that's kind of for sure supposed to be in our price. So then, uh, okay, let's, let's play with colors. So what is this? The network effect. <clears throat> yeah, so like it's <clears throat> how the connected, uh, one connected uh, buyer will affect uh, the welfare of the sellers, all of the sellers on other side. Yes, because if we come back to utilities, here yeah, the values. We remember so that P is connected to cover. Yeah, P is connected with our value of sellers. And we can see that we have here P multiplied by a number of sellers. <coughs> so that's how much I increase the, the utility of the sellers in joining one buyer. And the buyer gets subsidized by this amount to generate surplus on the other side. So that your price depends not only on the cost, but then you can, can be get uh, subsidized because you generate some surplus on the other side, which allow to, to make a profit from, from the other side of the platform. Why? Does it have a negative sign? Because you pay less since you can accumulate some positive effects on the other side. That's why you subsidize. Mm. Yeah, okay. So because then you join, the platform can make uh, positive profits on the other side. Since you generate more sellers on the other side. And increase their surplus. Yeah, and then platform can make more profits on the other side when you join as a buyer. That's why, uh, so that platform builds su suggest you lower price so the more buyers will join. When, okay. This one is just the uh, markup term, so, and this relates to, to elasticity price elasticity of demand with respect to <clears throat> so elasticity of demand with respect to prices. But that's a, a bit advanced term. So what, what we want to, to discuss here is, is the first two. And then we can see the same uh, for the same for for seller. So then, <clears throat> firstly, what we can uh, can say about uh, which price will be higher or lower for for buyers or for sellers? It depends on what on the cost of connecting buyers and sellers, on network effects that they generate for the other side, and on uh, the elasticity of demand. <laughs> yes, yes. No, no, so let's, uh, let's assume that we have something like similar for, for buyers and sellers. That uh, uh, Yeah, just, I don't know. If you're talking about Avita, one, uh, yeah, it's probably the cost to, to connect one more seller or buyers is much more the same. Uh, what is uh, mm, markup store we, we, we don't uh, want to discuss right now, but uh, 
what will be the crucial is how the sellers and buyers generate profits on other side. So if you have higher uh, network effects on the other side, <coughs> then you will be subsidized more. So in just simple example, if one buyer generates, for example, 10 sellers on the other side, and if one seller generates 100 buyers on the other side, then sellers will be those who, who paid less for subscription fee. So can you catch the logic? I think so. Mm, the conclusion, uh, so then what? So I understood uh, the example, but I didn't understand like uh, the main conclusion. So the conclusion, if you have the, the higher network effect, so you can generate more profits on the other side compared to the opposite case, then platform consider how much the <clears throat> one buyer or seller generate the... Mm. Okay, let's, let's start me. <laughs> so if we compare buyers and sellers and how much uh, agents uh, join in one seller or buyer generate on the other side, Okay, so those who, who generate more agents on the other side will be subsidized, subsidized more. Subsidized more mean pay less price for subscription. <coughs> because, so if you generate, yeah. Because they, uh, they attract more members and uh, thus increasing the platform's income just by joining. Yes. <coughs> Okay. Um, <clears throat> no, sir. Now let's think about the last term. <laughs> if we are talking about the, the elasticity of demand with respect to to price. <coughs> so if you're talking, for example, for sellers, we have to take the, the following uh, expression. So that will be the, the number of sellers in derivative with respect to um, value, then derivative of the value with respect to price of sellers, and then uh, multiply by mm, number, so price of sellers divided by number of sellers. So the demand is a number. <coughs> yes, so, and uh, the- Excuse me. The, Mm -hmm. What do the indexes are like? That's all sellers. So if you're talking about one size. And uh, V? Yeah, okay. So what is the elasticity indeed? It is one on one divided by this, so the opposite term, but yes, yeah, so that's normally we are talking about. No, not like that. So we are talking about that normally. But then since number depends on the value and value depends on the prices. So we distinguish it to two derivatives. <coughs> and now we can take this. So first term is just and price and prime sellers. The second one is who is the second one? The second one is, is one, right? If you go back, and how the value depends on, on the price, so we have just minus one. So that's this one. Minus one. And, and then, and then we have 
Right, number of sellers. And what we have here is um, yeah, price and then And you can see that you have the same term here as in our formula. So then let's... <coughs> Excuse me. And mm -hmm. how uh, do you call this uh, new with index S? It's like elasticity of what? of demand with respect to price okay so but normally uh, we are talking about uh, one over new instead of right um, so now let's let's think about one over new as uh, so that will be I, I will just reverse it right so it will be n Sellers, resellers, uh, and sellers. sellers. Now opposite, right? Yeah. So I forgot to reverse it. So price here, the prime here, and then price down as well. Yes, and now I have <clears throat> exactly the same. So I, if I take this from our formula for sellers. Yeah, I can mm, can put it. Mm. So then, let me now take uh, all uh, these to the left side and and rewrite it, so that we have one equation and then we have another equation that sorry, not M M M S E S divided by. Is what it is. It's a price for seller minus cost of seller, and then yeah, if we put to other side, it will be plus. Uh, so it will be u number of buyers. Right. And then let's put it together. Take this and put there. We have do you know what is this? Oh, is it look familiar for you? It's like a learner index. Yeah, exactly. So if we if you're thinking about that side, that's just learner index. Probably got it from <coughs> Andre's class or not. From last year from um well okay. Yes. Last year is last year. <coughs> yeah, what you have standard le learner index, it's um, it's a price, then minus marginal cost, divided by price. <coughs> and that's how you measure what? Markup. Hmm. Yes, and uh, but in, in which topic you discuss learner index probably? I don't know, but I can guess. In microeconomics, probably. Monopoly power, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so S it's some of that. Yes, then you then you want to measure the monopoly power and uh, 
but what we normally do with monopolies. As the regulator? Yeah. We don't like them, and we try to get rid of them. Yeah, so they, they, can't, uh, they want to for, forbid the monopolies because it's just yeah, making profits using monopoly power without any progress or whatever, <clears throat> without competition. <coughs> so, and, and learner index shows you, yeah, if, uh, if firm really have, uh, has a monopoly power to, and just increase the price because, because of uh, the monopoly structure of the, of the market. But, uh, yeah, and, and then we can make a decision to, to penalize firm, to forbid or to introduce some laws about the duopoly or uh, competition. So, but then uh, what is the difference between here? Yeah, you can see so that the difference is that this additional additional term in nominator, but uh, how it affects on our new learner index. It should be even greater. Yes, firstly, if we have a greater index, we said that it's uh, it's a monopoly and it's uh, probably a bad case, right? If So, like the platform monopoly um, is, well, has even more market power than just the ordinary monopoly? Well, one-sided. No, once again, please. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, we can see that the no, that the analog of learner index for the platform is larger than the learner index. So in the case of two-sided platform, its market power is even greater than. Uh, in the case of the standard one-sided monopoly. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> but then um, I want to focus your attention to, to the case of then we should penalize the platform and then we don't need to do that. So like, is it bad case then, then the platform choose like, high or low uh, prices. Yeah, so like, let me <coughs> a bit rewrite it. So now we have, uh, so we have price minus then cost. Okay, the, the, the main conclusion is that we are thinking about the uh, uh, some antitrust decision, so then we need to take into account the, the network uh, externality effects effects so that because we can see that uh, the network effects will def uh, will affect the price decision and we can see that uh, so that uh, it will affect even the kind of the same of the learner index uh, if, we, if we will measure it so it is not uh, correct here to to measure just the standard learner index so it will lead to inefficient decision in terms of 
Yeah, sorry that. <clears throat> and then coming back to uh, to our uh, optimal prices. There it is. So uh, if we consider the case on the standard market uh, and the firm put in low price, what does it mean? If the price is lower than uh, the, the, mar the marginal cost, what does it mean? If we are talking about the standard case. Uh, it's damping uh, anti-competitive behavior. Yes. So, like, uh, and damping is a is a bad thing in economics. So you you should avoid it. Right. And uh, what happens if uh, if you observe uh, neg uh, the price lower than uh, costs here in in the platform case? Can you claim that this is damping? No. no. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So that you have network externalities, and it could be the case that uh, network effects outweigh the the costs, such that you you want to set the the lower price in the market, lower than costs, to introduce network effects to generate them and, and then make profit on the other side and and that's uh that could be the case so that uh talking about the uh, antitrust regulation we we should take these things into account so then let's and i have a question uh due to this topic mm -hmm. well uh it's uh, logical and I've seen this thought in the article of uh, like uh, on which I was doing my summary that a platform can uh, like uh, take losses on the one side of the of the market and because of the network effects making profit on the other but can uh, those network effects be so uh, powerful uh, for the platform to maintain uh, prices lower uh, than um, marginal costs on the both sides. <clears throat> That's actually an uh, interesting question. The uh, answer is clear, not from, from our uh, profit function. So if you put both prices lower, it doesn't matter how much agents you have on both sides. Yes, you still have negative terms because you have nothing in, in the profit function. You have just the numbers multiplied by price minus costs. And if for both sides they are negative, it doesn't matter how much you generate numbers on your platform, you still gain negative profit from both sides. So it could be that on one side you have something slightly more than uh, costs, uh, costs. So on and, and other side, price significantly lower than uh, than costs. But then you have both sides, uh, prices lower than mm, than costs. Then yeah, you can say that you, you can make a pro can't make a profit. So that could be like in real life, it could be the case, and you just generate the numbers before making the profit, so that you you're losing uh, profit then to to increase the the numbers to solve the chicken and egg problem to to come up to the <clears throat> uh, optimal numbers and optimal price in future. But that as well can, can be considered as a damping on the market, right? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully, your uh, your article was was interested. <coughs> then let's uh, let's move to the uh, 
to the second uh, more complicated case so that uh, we have 20 minutes 20-25 so we have something else after our lecture so I will take five minutes from, from the beginning of the I'll wait for students if you don't mind so we'll talk about social planner on our exercise session probably um, but uh, let me then move to the to the case of two platforms now we have And uh, we are talking the same setup as on our exercise session. So let's assume that we have the model of linear city. So then you have uh, someone living on the one side of the city on another and someone in between. And they have platform one on, on one side and platform two on, on the other side. And you have uh, here the Mm, distribution of uh, of agents and uh, oh, let me see so that we have um, right there. need to pick our colors <laughs> so that we have uh, buyers and sellers so that buyers are uniformly distributed on zero one and we have sellers who are uniformly distributed on, on zero and one as well. So we know that here leave some some buyers and, and sellers in between in, in, in the city. So then uh, what we uh, can think about that uh, yeah let's say that these are two markets and then uh, a seller and buyer can decide to which market to go on the weekend so that mm, every buyer and seller choose to, to which market to go and we will assume that number of buyers on one market plus number of uh, buyers on the second market equals to one and the opposite so that everyone decides to to go somewhere yeah, since uh, yeah we we'll assume that they have total mass of one of, of buyers and sellers and then uh, if we are talking about this case uh, then we are thinking of example of the city and then you need to go to to one side of the city or another. So then we introduce the, the cost of traveling so that it is it is costly to, to move to some market depending on, on the distance. And tau is the cost per distance. And that k can be buyers or sellers. So, and, and this can be different for buyers and sellers. <clears throat> and let me introduce you the, the utility function so that the utility function of buyer who joins the market one depends on number of sellers on market one. Yeah, again, we have this constant U minus price for buyers on platform one. About uh, the terminology here, uh, that's not a utility, that's like value, right? But that's the same, value and utility. Uh, well, like for, we uh, for utility in this model, we have to adjust uh, to transport costs. Ah, huh? uh, yeah, so that's true. Thank you. So that's value of joining the platform, but then we indeed have the Mm. and the transportation cost as well. So then I can, can write the same for for the second platform, right? So 
and the, the buyer likes to have sellers on on the second platform then pays a subscription fee so then, mm, sellers like to have buyers on the on the second platform minus subscription fee for sellers on the second platform so then uh, can you help me to write down the profit function of uh, platform one depending on prices <coughs> just standard stuff assuming that we have costs for sellers and buyers we should introduce uh, s some kind of x hat no no just in in general terms <laughs> like we did for one platform case So we already have notation for number of sellers and buyers on first and second platform. So if we are talking about the profit of first platform, so that's price for buyers minus costs for buyers multiplied by number of buyers on platform one plus yeah the same for sellers. And they will have the same for, for platform for platform two. Platform two profit is price for buyer and I will assume that uh, connection costs are, are the same for for platforms. And now they, they should think about what's going on um, in, our, in our model. So let me say that firstly, platforms choose M1 buyers, M1 sellers, and then M2 buyers, M2 sellers. So simultaneously they decide about the prices, and then buyers and sellers join or not. So like, uh, <laughs> not the join or not, but join platform one or two. So now we are not thinking that <coughs> they can uh, cannot join any platform. We will think that they are just divided between two platforms. Uh, so we already consider this setup, uh, this setup in our exercise session. So can someone remind me the, the different agent for for joining the platform if we are talking about yes, buyer or seller? It's like one half plus the fraction, is that it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so it's one half plus the fraction, um, like uh, value of uh, first minus value of second divided by two 
price for what travel in. Yeah. And this equal to number of uh, engines on first platform. So if you're thinking about first and second platform, and we will find the indifferent agent for, for buyers and sellers. Yes, yeah, so those who join to the first platform is exactly the same, right? And those who join the, <coughs> the second platform is, uh, yeah, it still be, so, well, minus X. <coughs> And, and this they receive on our exercisation, so you can go and check the notes, but it's obvious, so then value to join the, uh, the first platform is higher, then uh, more agents join the first platform. If the value is the same, then we can see that it's just one half, so it's in between, so half of them goes to one side, half of them to another side. Yes, yeah, so then, and then you need to, so your difference in value adjust with the transaction costs, or the not transact, transfer costs. All right, since uh, not, not only value matter, but uh, your transfer costs to, to the platform, depending on their use situated on the interval from zero to one, because it's, it's important how far it's to go to the, to another platform. So what uh, what else? Uh, then let me <coughs> plug um, one expression for for another. So firstly, we have values here, and we have uh, expression for for values uh, here, right? So this one. And we have numbers as well. So then uh, let me put this value in, in our formula. Uh, remember. Yes. So what we have on left side is a number of agent who join the first platform. It's one half plus so value of uh, Agents who join the first platform is it was uh, okay. I have to pick someone. So let's let's think about buyers, right? So if you are talking about buyers, so value of buyers joining the first platform is number of sellers, All right? On first platform multiplied by u, then minus price for buyers on first platform. And they need to subs uh, subscribe the same for second platform. So that will be number of sellers on second platform, and then will be plus price of buyers in the second platform. And then let me notice here that we know that, uh, yes, number of sellers who join the, the platform two is one minus number of sellers who join platform one. So I can, can put it together. And then uh, I'm talking about the number of buyers who join platform one. It's one half, and then I have mm, two number of sellers who join platform one minus one multiplied it by u, and then plus price on the second platform minus price on the first platform. Divided by two tau b. 
right <clears throat> so then I can can do the same for for the second platform are you lost or are you here still is it too complicated by right now uh, what uh, have we done like uh, in the last row intuitionally or no, no, no just uh, where to ah uh, so we just uh, substituted uh, the n for yes for the second platform by the n of the first platform right right so let okay. me a bit rewrite it here so that i don't just need space so that was one half and it's number of buyers on first platform so that's number of buyers on first platform as a function of number of sellers on the first platform right if we keep prices are <clears throat> already fixed so yeah we, we remember that firstly platform decided on prices and then agents decide how to join so that uh, we kind of want to sell uh, solve this problem from backward induction once again as they did already several times <coughs> so you know the prices and you you want to calculate what is the numbers so then let me take the uh, the number of uh, uh, what I need else Yeah, <clears throat> number of uh, of sellers who join the platform one will be yes uh, the the same actually that because we have the same formula for different types so then we uh, can just change the index and what we will have mm, is just we need to change yes sellers to buyers then u to p prices for buyers to prices for sellers and then transaction or oh, sorry uh, transfer costs as well to, to sellers and then we got this number of sellers on first platform as a function of number of buyers on the first platform And what we need to do is to plug first one to another. And uh, still, just making sure uh, we can do it so easily because of the symmetry of distributions of buyers and sellers. If it uh, wasn't so, it would be like the double task. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but what what we what we have we just have this formula in general terms so that here you can say you can plug k yes for for sellers and buyers that's the k point since since it's similar behavior uh, so that you have similar in different agent then uh, I just here decided to put uh, buyers to specify u and Tau, yeah, tau k, I can still stick to tau k, but you have to decide u and p. I don't have indexes for that, I have different letters. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So, but yeah, then you have the similar behavior of, of in, in different uh, guys, so then it's, it's a bit different with p and, uh, and u, and tau is different here in prices, yeah. Mm, so now, yeah, I, I dislike that, but I need to plug it in. <laughs> uh, right. So let me do it uh, carefully. So first, let me uh, multiply everything by two, uh, 
2 tau b in, in first case, so that we have 2 tau b n bias 1 equals to 1 plus, so here we have 2 n s, and first s is, so that I take this and plug there. So if I multiply by 2, so it will be 1. Mm. Plus all this expression now divided just by tau s, and then this multiplied by u, and then plus prices. Yeah, I guess I'm correct. So then, um, what we need to solve for is um, number of buyers here and, and here. So they uh, want to take it uh, take it out. Um, <laughs> Shouldn't there be tau b sound in the right side? Plus if Instead of y? Oh, yeah, yeah, so sorry. That's tau b, right? And Not maybe there, there also was minus 1. Uh, two number of sellers minus 1. So maybe 1 will also disappear. Didn't see it. Ah, I mean minus one here. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's true. So that these two will be cancelled. Because we have this minus one. Thank you. Um. So then, uh, let me before maybe multiply everything by tau s, since minus are, uh, since ones are gone, so I will add here tau s, and then I have tau b tau s, and then I have Two number of bars minus one, and I have P U, and then I have prices for seller. And by U, and then here are prices for buyer. Am I right that I didn't have here P? Oh, looks like I'm supposed to have some there P, no? Yeah, it's here. Uh, what looks like correct now? <clears throat> so then if I take out And B1, I will have here 2 tau B tau S. And so then I, I think uh, there should be also tau S uh, with the last set of brackets. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That's correct. So then minus 2 B U. On one side, and everything on the right is tau b tau s minus p u, and then <coughs> we have this uh, process.
Well, if I will divide it, so you can see that we have similar. So this one and, and that one is just differs in two. Let me write n number of wires on first platform is <coughs> sorry, one half plus Let me double check myself. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I, I get incorrectly indexes for prices. Is it so or not? Missed some there. Miss. Yeah, but I know I think that's correct. So if price of the second side goes up, so the number on the first platform is increased. I think that's correct. So and if we are talking about sellers, then we will have yeah the same. We have different indexes, so we need to change this to buyers and this to P. So then sellers. And these two tau buyers. And then uh, that will be the same. So then we have the number of, of agents on first platform as a function of prices. So what we need to do the next step. So now we know if, if the platform set the price, how much agents will join the first and the second platform. That's because we, we have that number of uh, buyers join the second platform is one minus number of buyers on the first platform and the same for sellers. What was the next step? in that problem, that kind of problems. To plug it into profit function. Yes, exactly. So that what we need to do next is to, uh, for example, for first platform, it will be, you remember, whatever, price for, for buyers minus cost number of buyers and then plus the same for sellers. So what we need to do is to, to plug these numbers here um, and here and then take the first order derivative with respect to prices and solve the profit maximization problem. So I think we will do it later on, on our exercise or probably next class. I don't know.
So <clears throat> then, do you have any questions? I think today we'll finish on that. And uh, we have, well, we know that the number of buyers who join the second platform is equal to one minus the number of those who join the first one, because we know that the total mass of them is equal to one, right? Yes, Okay. exactly. Okay, I will stop uh, recording. Hmm. Sharing. And so you can. So, do you have any other questions about organi organization of midterm or whatever? Uh, maybe yeah, I'll send you the details later. So, probably you don't have any questions right now, specific one. And uh, as for the time, um, it is planned like uh, at 1 um, p.m., right? Yeah, an hour okay, and let me open minutes. it. Let me open the what I, what I have for a midterm, let me check. So you will have uh, 1 hour and 20, so 80 minutes, starting from uh, 1 p.m. So I will ask you to join 10 minutes before. Is it okay for you? So you probably don't have something before. Is it fine? Yes, we don't have status before, I guess. Uh, so great. <clears throat> then, yeah, we will have 80 minutes of, of midterm. And yeah, so it will be open book, so you can use everything, the materials, but you cannot use uh, your phone to to write someone else. Um, right. So if if you will take a phone to your hands, I will consider it as a deviation. So then. Probably you can use, uh, well, <laughs> I, I dislike these rules, but <clears throat> uh, so you can observe lectures uh, on, on your whatever laptop or laptop or PC. You can observe slides, you can use uh, your notes. Um, yeah, and then in the end, you will need to take pictures of your handwritten job and, and, and send me in a PDF file. And uh, we'll have to place the camera the way that you can see us and our workspace, right? Just as usual. Yeah, so perfectly it will be uh, if you if you put it from behind. So to, so you, I can see both of uh, you, you and, and workspace. If you don't have such a possibility, just your workspace is okay. So I, I can see your hands and that's enough. Okay. Um, uh, so we can uh, search th uh, through our slides, but we shouldn't use any messages or just the internet, right? Uh, yeah, you, you can you can Google but you cannot uh, interact to each other. It's yeah, OK. Well, I, I cannot, uh, I cannot for f you know, check that you didn't use Google, for example, right? It's, it's, it's not, yeah. So that's, there is no sense to, uh, to forbidden this. But if you will, you know, I, that I see that you are chatting on your keyboard not on the phone, but but on laptop, it, it's kind of the same, right? So, yeah, OK. Because I don't ask you to type the solution. You're supposed to write it by hand. Well, uh, I wouldn't ask something really complicated, so don't worry that it will be hard to solve. 
Yeah, what I need to, yeah. The rest is just the standard stuff you will read. I will send you the rules today to your mm, mailbox a few, a few hours later. Uh, and uh, you will sli uh, send the slides as well, right? Yeah, sure. I will upload it today. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. See you on Friday.